I was a sophomore and enrolled in ROTC, as were all other male students at LSU in those days. From LSU, we were called to active duty on a quasi-basis in the latter part of 1942. But we were permitted to stay in school for another few months and then were actively called in 1943 and became corporals in the U.S. Army Infantry. Shortly after that, we were ordered to leave school and to attend the various schools for completing our training for commissioning. In our case, about 75 of us went to Fort Benning, Georgia to the infantry school and completed our program there on October the 26th, 1943. And from there, that class was dispersed all over the world. I was fortunate to stay at Fort Benning for another nine months and then was ordered to the Pacific. Our first port of call then was New Guinea. We stayed there a short while and then were ordered to the Philippines. The island of Leyte had been invaded probably two or three weeks before. So we went in to Tacloban, Leyte and from there disembarked and were put in the fourth replacement depot there. We all recognized that that was a fairly vulnerable position to be in, and I was waiting for my specific assignment as an infantry mortar platoon leader. But one evening, a captain from General MacArthur's headquarters, the advanced echelon of headquarters, turned up in camp and decided he wanted to interview anyone in camp who had had some experience as an adjutant, which was somewhat of an administrative job in the States. After the second day of interviews, he called me in one night and said, okay, Laborde, you're my man. I said, Captain, yes, sir, you know, what am I to do? He said, well, you're gonna be assigned to the Adjutant General's Department in General MacArthur's headquarters. And tomorrow morning, there'll be a Jeep here to pick you up and we'll take you to Tolosa to join the advanced echelon. Now I was gonna be with the headquarters group and that was a little safer than elsewhere. The job that, that we had, and there were about a half dozen of us, we would screen every incoming and outgoing message from the general headquarters and had to decide what to do with that, with the incoming messages, who to take it to. If we got something that was for General MacArthur's eyes only or a top secret for him, we had to see to it that we got it in the hands of his chief of staff. And failing in that, we had to wake him wherever he was and hand carry that message to him. We got word on about August the 15th, 1945, from Switzerland and through Washington that the Japanese were prepared to surrender. General MacArthur then penned in longhand his requirements for setting up the surrender ceremony. And we arrived in Yokohama on the 29th of August, 1945. And we set up the advanced echelon then on a pier right at Yokohama, at the Yokohama Harbor. And the Missouri was about 100 yards off from that pier. My friend Dick Guthrie and I, being the youngest members of the staff there, were ordered to stay on the dock there and keep the headquarters open while the surrender parties all boarded boats there and went to the Missouri. That was September 2nd, 1945, and a lot of people erroneously call the 15th of August VJ Day, the day that the Japanese came down to Manila. Officially, and among our group, VJ Day was September 2nd, 1945, when the surrender was signed. It's the day World War II ended on a worldwide basis. From there, we moved to Tokyo. Joe MacArthur set up his headquarters in the Daiichi Building in Tokyo, right across the street from the Imperial Palace. He was ordered by the president to prosecute the emperor 
for war crimes. MacArthur sent a message back saying, if you require me to do that, which I forcefully don't agree with, be prepared to lose a million American lives. The president relented on that, President Truman. As a result, he ordered his people to put down their weapons that the war was over. You know, we were so involved with our commitment to the United States of America, the most unlikely ones that emerged as real heroes saved the lives of hundreds of their fellow Americans and no one would have thought they would do that. It happened every day.